So we'll begin in just a minute or two. And welcome to the Transportation Committee meeting of uh, Wednesday, September 25. Uh, I am Councilman Mike Bonham, the chair, uh, joined by my colleague Nuri Martinez of the 6th District. Uh, so, um, we will, uh, f uh, first, uh, Mr. City Attorney, about item number 13? Yes, item number 13 is being continued based on our recommendation. We'd like to take a deeper look. Okay, so that item will not be heard today. Uh, and uh, that will then bring us to... Um, People who have filled out cards for multiple public comment. Let me switch over. Um, Corey Schmidt. Corey here? Okay. Uh, he's done. Um, Uh, Mr. Herman and Mr. Spindler. You have two minutes for items on the agenda and a minute of enlightening general public comment. This Begin. Yeah, this is a separate special meeting. Begin. Right. Yes, Massa. Yes, Annette. Talking about from our nonprofit transportation niggas a 401 C4. Thank you so much. Thank you to Internal Revenue Service for that determination of nonprofit status. Now we get to I don't want the general manager. Fuck you. You don't know nothing about transportation. You know about slowing down transportation, but not moving mobility. Mobility means, remember the old days when the motherfucking faggot used to tell us, how did you get here today, walking? How many by biking? Well, I bike, I motorbike, I'm a pedestrian, only on video games. The rest of the time I drive my SUV and I go down a couple of buds on the way down, yes sir. So then number two, the racist Mike Bonin with his little Chango the drug addict on number two, banning that fucking camping. Now you said that everybody that has a camper can camp as long as they move it in 72 hours. But like most faggots, he fuck us in the ass. Now he won't want us to park. I got a camp. Look at that. Number two, number three, number four. Mr. Homeless Advocate, what you doing when it's in your backyard, motherfucker? You ban the homeless only when it affects your neighborhood. You don't want us. You want us to go live in the 8th District and the 9th District. I ain't living there. I'm going to live with the white people from now on. That's right. Okay, your time for the agenda items is up. You have one minute for general public. That's comment. right. So tomorrow is the... The Metro board meeting and this drug addict over here is on that board. <laughs> I tried to try the expo line and I learned that this pill popping faggot took terraces down in August. It takes me nine additional minutes to get my Mr. class Spindler, at you USC. Spindler, you need to stay You are, that. motherfucker. This you're a member of the board of Metro. And you're the chair. How is that not on Spindler, topic? If you continue Mr. off topic, you're going to be removed attorney. from the meeting. Mr. City Attorney, may we have clarification? Now, Metro is transportation. 
you are a board member of the Metro because you represent the city, right? So how, how is that possibly not on topic? So go back to your little chongo, take your drugs. I'll see you at the next meeting, folks. Thank you, Mr. Herman. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so you see, you got, like, measure M for mother. Which fucking, item are you speaking on, sir? Fucking item 12, that's all it says, measure M. It's the only one with measure M. You're fucking stupid. What about the amount for $70.2 million for appropriation for the transportation grant funds for 15 Mr. Project. Herman, I asked what? you to stop talking for a second, and I said hold your time. Mr. Spindler, you have your only warning. If you continue to disrupt this meeting with any noises, you're going to be asked to leave. You may continue, Mr. Herman. Now that I was subjected to discrimination because of my disability, I was forced to shut up before he had his little finger pointing at people. You shouldn't do that. For $70.2 million, I stick my finger up my ass and shut the fuck up for those appropriations for transportation grants. You know, I've been disabled, and ever since that Willis versus Los Angeles, your 15 fucking projects haven't helped me with $30 million a year to fix the infrastructure that Ben Carson talked about. 1.9 million for other projects. Fuck you, Eric Garcetti, you fucking transportation nigger. And what about the other one on Bonin? He wants to subject us to 21 inches, oh, no, 21 feet for our vehicles because I sleep in my vehicle. Now he wants me to sleep on the fucking sidewalk. But no, you passed that new 49N nigger, which means I can't sleep anywhere near a mile from the city. And that's because my little fucking chongo friends who, who know you very well object to that. So what about what other item? Oh, here's the, the silver tongue cop, that fucking Italian, Joe Buschiano. And oh, look, there's another nigger here, Bluefield. He's married to an Oreo, a woman seven feet in high during her hours of the 2, 6 a.m. regulations. Well, fuck that bitch. I'll sleep on 140th Street if I want to. And if I could, I'll tell the cunt I'll sleep next to you and your Jew little boy. Fuck Bob Bloomfield and fuck Joe Buschiano. You have one minute for general public comment on matters pertaining yeah, to... Yeah, unpleasant sharp attacks on government and public officials is part of political arena. Abusive. And yes, if they ever make me sleep in my fucking camper outside, the first Man, I want in my sights will be one of them motherfuckers putting a rifle to your head. So Watts versus the United States, United States versus Bag Zero Zero Nine Five O Five Two Nine. You have to call two one three 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 zero nine eight zero to ask for Kenny Hong of Homeland Security because I done nothing wrong. I done nothing right. I'm like every God said I I can't do shit. I'm so unsustainable with my fucking homeless crisis. I like Bonin, want to raise my drug addict fucking chongo too. Maybe even an orangutan. Thank you, Ridley Thomas, nigga. Uh, for those of you who are new to this uh, committee's deliberations or <laughs> city hall. It's actually not funny. It's, it's really uh, not funny. Yeah. It's really not funny what, what this man just said. It's not funny. Uh, it's uh, an unfortunate result of court decisions um, uh, respecting the First Amendment that this body, this committee, and all committees in this building, the Council, the Board of Supervisors, and LA Metro uh, routinely are subjected to what you just heard. Um, we would strongly prefer not to have you subjected to it, nor would we like to be subjected to it, but it's the result of a court decision. So our apologies that you had to be exposed to it, um, but um, the offenders have both left. Um, Mr. Previn, you have two minutes for the cards you filled out items on and then a minute for general public comment. Right. It's Eric Previn from Studio City. And I'll take note that today is primarily a day about 
further restrictions and prohibitions on parking, limiting where Angelinos can put their cars uh, and restricting the amount of time that Angelinos can uh, put their cars. We just had a uh, big meeting the other day, and there were tons of people advocating about how more and more people are experiencing homelessness and needing to stay in cars. And this, this is just a rollout that is, I've never seen anything like it. Over the last two years, Mr. Bonin, I mean, I'll give you credit where credit is due. You have restricted parking in over 250 specific, which could be up to 10 blocks or more uh, of neighborhoods in L.A. City. It's, it's just, it's, it, I don't think there's been anything like it. Now, I know that you guys like to get revenue, but the revenue hasn't been coming up so high because we've been struggling to nail people because people are afraid. And we can't nail homeless people because... Frankly, it doesn't do any good, and people uh, in the community don't even want to do that. Giving a homeless person a ticket it, they can use to patch a hole in the place where they're staying, it doesn't, it doesn't solve the problem. So I, I just, you know, it, it really upsets me. And, you know, in my neighborhood, Mr. Nagel knows, and whatever that guy's name is, John White knows, they have tried to slip through preferential parking district. We, I raised many questions all of which were virtually stonewalled. They don't follow the California Public Record Act. They have a guy named Felix Valverde, or Valde, who's a very nice man, but he's completely in and over his head. And then he works with guys like Barry Johnson in our neighborhood, who are covertly working with the council district offices to nail it, and then lock up all the parking so that folks who work in the restaurants and nearby have no place to go get ticketed, or don't lose their jobs, or can't get to work. So it's very, very bad. Now, for general public comment, thank you, sir, um, I just would say that the practice of putting three 1 p.m. meetings, and this is going to sound wonky for the folks who've never heard expletives, but when you have three committee meetings at 1 p.m. with two special meetings at 1.15, you put a number of items before the public who have that only chance. Right now, uh, I'm missing a chance because I'm here with you, so I want you to feel appreciated. But the problem is, is that it really is a disenfranchisement technique because when it, all these committee items is the only time when the public can speak because when you bring it to council under at Herb Wesson's leadership, you have, you have no opportunities to speak. Under his and I guess all of your leadership, Councilmember Martinez, you've been finding ways to have just general public comment, the absolute minimum, and not, not allowing Angelinos to speak on the issues of homelessness, the issues of transportation problems, the issues of disposition of uh, record schedules. We've got Tom LaBange, the guy who liked to burn his records before he left CD4 in the building today, lurking around. I assume he's now a lobbyist, but I don't know. And I just find the whole thing appalling, Mr. Bonin. So thank you for your time, and I don't like being disenfranchised and told in advance your that... Time oh, okay, good. Have a minute. Okay, uh, we will now go to general public. Actually, I'm going to do the, the uh, DOT presentation first, and uh, then we will do uh, general public comment after that. So uh, item number one. Item number one is the general manager's report on uh, a verbal presentation relative to the department's ongoing projects and recognition of the department's employees for outstanding service. Great. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to recognize some of our um, best and brightest at LADOT. Um, today we are recognizing three folks. Two of them are here. One of them isn't. So we're going to give them a round of applause um, anyway. But first, um, please stand when I call your name. Anna Soberanis. Anna is a senior administrative clerk working with the Parking Meters Division. She joined the city in August 20, 2006 as a traffic officer assigned to the West LA Parking Enforcement Office. As a traffic officer, she received high praise for her work ethic, punctuality, motivation, and positive attitude towards the public and her fellow employees. She served in that capacity until an accident made it impossible for her to continue working in that classification. After medical leave, she joined the Parking Meters Division in March of 2018 as a senior administrative clerk. The senior admin clerk position was vacant 
for several months, so there was a huge backlog of valet requests, which required extensive interaction with valet operators to follow the process and pay fees. Despite the hard work of staff to manage the high volume of requests, the program lacked the resources to address the demand. Anna is a quick learner and took on these challenges head on. She was able to organize the process and make the necessary phone calls to collect fees from the operators. As a result, compliance by the valet operators improved tremendously. Overseeing these responsibilities requires a strong work ethic, attention to detail, diligence, and high level of professionalism. Anna demonstrated all of these values and much more by always pitching in to support wherever she saw a need. She managed to organize the everyday functions of the office and quickly earn the full admiration and respect of the entire team. Anna demonstrates many of LADOT's strategic plan principles, including integrity, honesty, respect, reliability, and accountability in working with the public and her peers. She is an outstanding team member and city employee, and she deserves recognition for her outstanding work. Thank you, Anna. Next up from the Bureau of Transportation Technology is Jana Smith. <laughs> Technology is rapidly changing how we move, and the LADOT Bureau of Transportation Technology is at the forefront of mobility in LA. The new mobility team is collaborating with technologists, planners, academics, and our neighborhoods with the leadership of Jana Smith. She exemplifies resiliency and team spirit. Jana is the Autonomous Vehicles Project Manager. She's managing grant funding, researching best industry practices, and continues to build public and private partnerships to bring the future to a near reality. Collaborating with the AV Working Group across the state on behalf of LEDOT, our city is positioning itself to deploy an autonomous vehicle pilot program um, and lead the state and the nation in showing how it's done. Jana is putting our ideas in motion. We are very grateful for her service and want to acknowledge her, her hard work. Thank you, Jana. Even though he's not here, uh, we're going to give a great LADOT shout out to Don Tidwell. Don is a signal systems electrician assigned to the signal repair lab, and his daily duties uh, are modem test and repair as well as conflict monitor support. However, Don does so much more than his regular assignments. He's really the key to our entire signal lab database, and his biggest claim to fame is that he created a way for the markout crews that go out in the middle of the night and do the hard work of making sure that streets don't stay dark, um, of, of uh, mapping out all of the underground utilities um, by Google Earth in the city to make sure that we protect our critical infrastructure. Um, Don uses his computer skills, attention to detail, and creativity to make all of our jobs easier and more productive and the citizens of LA safer. Thanks to Don for his years of hard work. Uh, thank you very much. Congratulations to Don and Absentia and to Jana and Anna. Uh, thanks very much for everything that you do to make the city work. Thank you. Anything else? Nope. Thank you very much, Ms. Reynolds. Okay, so Ms. Martinez, I will recommend, I'm recommending items uh, 2 through 11 on consent. Any objections? Nope. Okay. Um, and on item 12, um, do you have any questions on item 12? No, I do not. Okay. Uh, on item 12, I recommend we approve it. Um, uh, with uh, amended to say we, we, we approve the reports and recommendations, then ask number two, direct LADOT to report back in 30 days with a prioritization process that includes specific scoring criteria, including but not limited to disadvantaged communities, vision zero high injury network, and connectivity with existing infrastructure. Three, direct LADOT to report back in 30 days with the required public participation element. Four, direct LADOT to report back in 30 days with a proposed approach for utilizing 0.5% uh, of program funding for future project development. And five, direct LADOT to report back annually with a status update on projects included in the five-year allocation plan, including any proposed amendments. And I can give that to the clerk in case you didn't catch all that. Thank you, sir. Uh, so um, that objection, that is a direction of the committee. Uh, and that brings us to general public comment. We have um, nine members of the public uh, who are here to uh, speak on general public comment. You can come up and you can speak for one minute on 
any item under the jurisdiction of the Transportation Committee. Um, I'll start with uh, Hussein Lazar, Walter Vera, Steve Bauer, and Gwen Slaughter. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, my name is Hussein Lazar. I am the owner of Open Bus Tours. I want only to say thank you very much for giving us a chance to hear us for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Walter Vera. I am from 360 LA Tours, and I am here to also thank you for the opportunity to continue with this process. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Steve Bauer with Ultimate Hollywood Tours. With no voice, I apologize. I agree with these. We appreciate the time to move forward. Okay. Hi, my name is Gwen Slaughter. I'm the general manager of Starline Tours of Hollywood. Again, I also would like to say thank you for uh, reconsidering and just know that we all want to be a part of the solution, not the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Angela LeQuang, Steve Donaldson, George Widinger, and Mohammed Jewell. Hi, I'm Angela Lee Quang. I have an open top tour. Thank you uh, to come here and join with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Honorable City Attorney, for the uh, time. I'm uh, also representing the Hollywood Tour Companies, and uh, we respect your observance of fundamental due process, including a uh, notice opportunity we heard, rational basis, and uh, no selective enforcement. So uh, thank you, Honorable Chairman. Thank you. What was your name, sir? I am Mr. George Widinger. Got it. Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> My name is Stephen Donaldson of the Big Red, <clears throat> Big Red Bus Company in Hollywood. Uh, the reason we're all here today is because we are all uh, supporters of our great city of Los Angeles, which we, I agree, I believe, is the greatest city in America. And one of the problems that we have is with uh, transporting tourists that want to see our wonderful city. Uh, and therefore, we're here today to say that we're here to work with the city of Los Angeles, that we're not here as a, as a problem for the city, and that we're here to work with you and, what, uh, and to discuss whatever laws uh, you put forward, that we can discuss them so that we can operate in the, in the city safely, so that we can take tourists from all over the world around our wonderful city and show them how terrific it really is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. My name is Mohammed Jewel. I'm from Hollywood Value Tours. And thanks for, you, for the opportunity to come over here. Thank you very much. Um, thank you all. Uh, and then uh, Samuel Gavorgan. Thank you very much, dear committee, for listening to us. Uh, I just hope that we will in the, uh, in the future hearings have some more time to uh, propose our own ideas of what the solutions could be. Uh, having read the report, some of the things like the public safety or the noise or the disturbance of the community, I believe they could be solved different ways, not just by prohibiting the tour companies or specific companies from going over there. Uh, and uh, I believe all the tour operators would have solutions or at least propositions of how the matter can be resolved taking into account the side of the business owners as well as the residents who live in that in those communities uh, and just thank you very much for listening to us today and taking us into account into account as well thank you very much well that round of public comment was certainly a refreshing counterpoint to the earlier round um, uh, mr. LeBange would you like to say anything while you're here special recognition to Edward James Olmos and others, uh, as well as the recognition of Musso Franks. I think these people said better than anybody could say about tourism. I worked with these people over the years when I was in City Hall, and I brought the big double-decker buses downtown, first of, and other things. There are solutions that could be made. There is protections in narrow streets that we have to deal with, but I think they have some of the answers, and getting around a table with staff probably could be the best next step 
to find solutions for this. And uh, thank you. I think the great thing about our city is that we should welcome people, uh, especially give them a chance. I made a big effort to expand Griffith Park, but in between that expansion came technology, which put people individually right in the backyards of their neighborhoods, as opposed to some direct ways to get them to the Vista points, Hollywood side and these others. But I, I thank you. Transportation is right up there. and. I look forward for continued discussion and give them a, a, a fair amount of time. Uh, I don't know if we could be ready in the next two weeks at least to have an interface with staff out there in the city attorneys to make sure it's done correctly. Thank you, and it's good to see you both. One of you more than the other, only because she's the San Fernando Tiger. <laughs> Uh, Mr. LaBonge, that's a 30-day suspension from the west side. Uh, okay, uh, that uh, concludes this meeting. So we will adjourn this meeting, and then we will uh, quickly uh, reconvene the special committee meeting. Sure. Or convene the special committee meeting. Uh, and um, it is one item on the agenda. Item number one of the special agenda is an LADOT report relative to the fiscal year 1920 state of good repair grant program in the amount of five, uh, 563130 to 620000 from um, Caltrans for the purchase of one replacement battery electric dash bus. Okay, Mr. Spindler is not here. Mr. Herman is not here. Mr. Schmidt is not here. Mr. Previn is not here. Uh, Okay. Um, so, um, any objections to approving the item? No. Okay, so without objection, this item is approved and the special meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Excellent.